Hi guys. Right, so this is the uh, first part of a recorded lecture for roads. That's in the chapter four of your infra course. All right, so uh, we, we give the credits to uh, Bono for Isa for the slides. So without further ado, let's uh, carry on with the lessons today. Okay, let's see. Right, so how do we define roads? Uh, we say that uh, roads are uh, simply roads or paths that begin at one destination and leads to another. Basically, we are talking about uh, connecting one point to the other and uh, you can call that the road. Uh, simply put, that is how it, it is. Uh, the, in modern days, then we know that uh, uh, when we talk about a road, uh, what comes in our mind, it could be a paved road, yeah? paved road Jalan Batura. Okay? And when we talk about paved road, uh, I know you guys are very familiar with this, you think uh, whether it's paved with bitumen, and Itam Legamdu, or it's a concrete road. Right? Uh, but you could also be thinking about earth roads, Jalan uh, Tana, and uh, that could be uh, Jalan Tana Mera, or that could be an earth road that is uh, uh, laid with the loose crusher run. So roads that can become uh, very muddy, lecha for the waktu hujan. Uh, so this is what we, we, we mean by roads today. As you can see in the uh, second statement here, uh, to construct to construct modern day roads, uh, we are no longer we are no longer depending on the manual labor. A lot of it, uh, a lot of this work will involve uh, machines like uh, excavators, graders, asphalt pavers, and so on and so forth. So these are the machines that you commonly find uh, along the expressways, highways, and uh, federal roads, and so on. Uh, note that we are starting to use some more technical terms, specific terms for roads here. Alright, okay. And um, uh, the, another way of looking at roads is that we like to think that uh, roads can be categorized as uh, whether you say it's road or streets. So in general, we think that roads are not the streets. But if you think about it, roads and streets are not the same. Look at the definition for, for road here on the left-hand side of, of the slides. It's like, okay, you connect two places. Um, and they are usually productive places, high speed, low accessibility, simple design, not adaptive. So these these terms are all open Then look at the, the counterpart streets. So streets is what? Public road in the city or town, there are houses and buildings. So there are there are commercial activities going around. There are residential uh, areas in that place. And the uh, Dajaka economy so involves creating wealth. Usually it's not very high speed, but the accessibility is very high. You can easily get into it compared to roads, which are, we are referring to probably like highways and all. You need to get onto it. You need the toll gate, for example. And to get onto highway, we know that to get into the entrance or exit of the highway, uh, entrance, I'm sorry, uh, to get to the toll, as Najaka, you need to go through some city roads, some, some peripheral roads before you can come to the highways. You see, so the accessibility is not that high. And uh, the designs and the for streets could be very complex. Yeah, because you have to navigate between those uh, developed areas of houses, uh, of, of uh, commercial areas and so on. Uh, whereas for, for roads, it could be simpler because uh, most of the time when we construct roads, we are talking about clearing up, clearing up uh, uh, virgin land, hutan, ataupun merata kan bukit, so that you could have a fresh piece of land, clean land, vacant land to build. But we are talking about streets is that you could be trying to construct uh, or to expand a road that is a single lane to double lane uh, in a place that has already has got a, a place that has development on, on the, uh, around it. So that, that could be a bit more complex. Okay? And you may need to uh, uh, avoid places uh, that are crowded, for instance. Uh, for, for example, you couldn't be constructing a road uh, next to a, 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 I would rather say, mm, you couldn't be expanding your road, rather. You couldn't be an like, existing road. You couldn't possibly be expanding that road in a place where there is, uh, for example, uh, an existing uh, a commuter train station, for example. So you could, you probably need to, uh, in in a way, acquire more land so that you'll be uh, avoiding avoiding congestion in the station area, or you have to reroute and get somewhere else uh, to get the road to be conducted elsewhere, so it doesn't cause congestion to the existing place. So that that will bring up to uh, bring us to more complexity in the design. And uh, in terms of adaptive, obviously, if it's, uh, we're talking about these big roads, then they are not very adaptive. Adaptive means what? They are mudah, the sesuai kanan Kan? So, sebab tak mudah lah dan adaptif tu for this road Sebab tu, you tengok highway lazimnya se-straight yang boleh Se-lurus-lurus yang boleh ha? Kalau boleh, elakkan lengkung Bila nak lengkung? Uh, kalau ingat lagi dah lama tak dalam campus kan Kalau ingat jalan ke Pago ni Bengkang, bengkok Sebab apa? 
gaung So to elakkan gaung tu uh, Kita terpaksa lah lengkungkan jalan tu Or to elakkan the, a bukit for example To ratakan cost too much of money for example So we try to go around it When you go around it, it's a curve When you go a curve, you know that it takes a bigger distance So for, for a designer, surely you want the shortest distance uh, Lesser cost, shorter construction period But you don't always have that Right. So, uh, however, in the case of streets, you can see a highly adaptive. We can try to find ways. If jalan tak boleh, kita buat flyover pula. Macam tu lah maksudnya. Okay. Good. Right. Uh, and here are two slides that show us a number of uh, types of roads that we usually come across. And now it's just simply giving some more, uh, giving some technical names to them. You already seen these roads before. Let's look at them one by one. Earth road, macam saya katakan, jalan tanah. Memang nak, nak terang-terangan tanah lah kan. Sometimes the most basic ones are that kiri kanan, no. Jalan ni asalnya ialah macam ni, beluka ke hutan. Buang aja, this beluka ke uh, pokok-pokok ni, rumput-rumput, dah itu tanahnya. Itulah jalannya. Tapi ada kalanya ialah dah buang, eh, the strip off all the beluka and all the rumput-rumput. The tanah is very bad, eh, too lembek, too soggy. So they will bring in backfill. You learn in soil mechanics before this. You bring in imported soil, put them on. You don't just put them on, you got to compact it. Uh, then you get a quite a nice road like this. No matter how nice, we know that soil is very susceptible to rainfall infiltration. Kan? So lama lama they wash out, they can erode it and they can cause all the lopak lopak lah. So earth roads is very basic, very cheap, but uh, they don't last. Okay, and let's look at the one on the right hand side. These are what we call the water bound road and macadam. Senang cakap, is a gravel road lah. Alright, as you can see, better than this one, the earth road, because uh, yang ini ditutupi dengan batu batu. Alright. And we go down here, see the cement concrete. Ini memang bagus lah, canggih. Ini lazimnya concrete road ni memang jumpa highway aja lah. Huh? And uh, this is also common, bituminous or uh, black top because it's black in color. Sometimes we call uh, these uh, bituminous roads, we also call them just uh, pavement. Huh? Pavement kita assume dia adalah yang the uh, bituminous road. Okay. And uh, we also could be uh, looking at, just a moment, let me just go back. Yeah, these are the four main types of roads uh, that, that, that we usually encounter. Can you think of any other types of roads that are not shown here? Can you? Uh, put on your thinking cap a little bit. Uh, if not now, uh, later on after the class, think about it. Did we miss anything? Are they just uh, are there just these four or are there more? Right, the subcategories that we have not covered here. Good. Okay, then let's quickly go through the uh, factors that com are commonly considered when you're trying to locate a new major road. So this is situation where you want to build a new road and uh, 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 the, the, the place is totally new, meaning that you can strip off new land. All right. So what are the factors we think about? We look at number one, the engineering economics, meaning that uh, the construction and maintenance. So when we talk about these things, these two uh, construction and maintenance, they always relate to what cost, obviously. Cost. And then user cost. Uh, development potential whether well, user cost is usually talking about the return if you build this road uh, say it costs you a, a million to build this stretch of road uh, how long would it take you to do the ROI the return on, on the uh, return on investment yeah things like that they want to know uh, whether it's berbaloi ke tidak lah senang cakap lah to build that road alright number two the social aspect of recreation and conservation these days is very very sensitive kan pasal conservation ni you nak tebas mana-mana tu berluka pun baik-baik ya kena kat reservation orang atau kena dekat orang yang tree hugger a bit a bit sensitive lah berluka tu ada tempat rumah-rumah tenggiling siap you macam tu lah kena hati-hati Alright, and also recreation. These days, we want green lungs in the city. Uh, kecil kecil tempat macam pagu pun kena make sure the the green strips are all there. It's not a bad thing. It's just that sometimes, uh, sometimes these kind of thing come to conflict with development, especially civil engineering works. Uh. Civil engineering works is always considered to be very destructive. Nya jarang sekali civil engineering works, especially at earthworks punya stage, di angkat bagus nya. Bila bangun naik, uh, taman dan naik, oh bagus semua cantik semua estetik lawa bagus mana awak. Tapi awal awal tu bila tebas tebas uh, berluka tebas hutan Uh, terbang hutan uh, rata kata uh, orang tak suka tu sebab itu nampak merosakkan alas kita uh, macam tu lah so that that part of things uh, you need to consider and then that relates to ecology and aesthetics okay okay then we move on to road classification um this is in general how we classify the roads we talk about federal roads jalan persekutuan private roads or can be told or state roads local authority roads and other roads now i think uh, 
you have known all this. Is when you travel on roads, even though you have not learned about uh, the classification of roads, you you have realized uh, what kind of category these roads fall on uh, fall into. So I wouldn't bore you by going through these descriptions with you. I would just like to take a draw your attention to the second one, what we call the private roads or the toll roads. Let's read the definition. Yeah, alternative the federal roads built and maintain a concession company. I put the concession companies. Chonto plus, Chonto. Uh, number two. Kursas Highway and things like that all those uh, highways that you can see they put up a name there uh, a number two, where a certain company um, it can be GLC or whatever it doesn't matter meaning that uh, it's run by a company and in Malaysia I think we are, uh, our system is such that most of our uh, toll roads are, are, are governed, uh, governed and managed by plants but there are uh, uh, few uh, probably uh, the subsidiary smaller ones Tapi Chontonia when I was in Asia I noticed that uh, these roads are not exactly uh, big highways like ours. It, it, it's, it's almost like um, the, the quality and the characteristic, characteristics of these roads are like federal roads of ours. Okay? Federal roads are uh, chonto macha ah. Jalan yang kita lalui the uh, jalan kurang batu bahat tu. Nyerai kat campus Indo. So these kind of roads are two lanes up and down. Uh, simple roads like this. Simple I would say. But uh, two lanes no, no doubt. Alright? So and certain stretches of these roads uh, connecting like one pekan to the other pekan are actually tow. You'd be surprised. Of course, the toll is not very expensive. It's like uh, conversion uh, after conversion to our money is probably like two or three ringgit. But uh, they are charged roads and they are not highways. Oh, so these are privately run. So most likely, it's like uh, people between these two pekans they share out the money, get the company to build that road, make it nice, so they are, they are, the two pekans uh, can be connected nicely and safely. But you have to pay them. Uh, somebody have to collect the toll money to, to recoup the money that they are invested. Things like that. Okay, right. And uh, this map is a very popular map. You you can go on Google and, and get this. Is uh is uh, I assume it's a public property thing, uh, about the road networks in Malaysia. Just just take a quick look. Huh? it's like uh due to our historical uh, background, uh economic development and things like that. Many of these roads you can see that uh I would rather say okay. Let me rephrase. The network our road networks are very much uh, uh inclined yeah inclined on the West Coast, if you notice, Prasanta. Ah, Borat kat sebelah kanan tu. Eh, sorry, kiri, kiri saya lah. Eh? Sebelah kiri tu, uh, sebelah pantai Barat. Mm. So that has very much to do with, with our historical economic development. It goes way back, eh? way back to the British time, especially when they started building roads. So if, if nothing else, one of the good things that uh, come out from these uh, colonial times is that they give us uh, the beginning of our modern infrastructure, the roads, the real roads, and the ports and the harbours, right? Uh, and and uh, if you notice also that uh, uh, what we call the uh, straight settlement, the green, green, selah, belajar sejarah itu, Penang, come down to okay, Penang here, then we come down to Malacca, the next one is Singapore, uh, which is not part of us, so it's omitted from this uh, Malaysian uh, major road network with your map. Uh, so, so ni tiga yang the, they start, it started off the the interest, um, the interest of uh, apa to British, and the rest. Uh, the Europeans uh, to, to come to us so it is not surprising that um, the, the road networks are heavy, more heavily developed on this end so, uh, but we do know that today uh, we are also expanding uh, not just to the east coast and the central bit of uh, Malaysia and also to uh, Sabah Sarawak uh, do take note that uh, if you take a line and you draw it across uh, along, not across, along the central bit of the uh, peninsula Malaysia you see that there are no roads around here not many ah, ada temu satu dua. Sebab apa? Ah? Correct. Banjaran Titi Wangsa dekat situ kan ada tulang belakang ah, the spine of peninsula. So you can't possibly be building roads ah, along the, the 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 tulang belakang tu. Wah, apa kan tak payah. Uh, people want to tembus nampak it's all tembusin punya. Like Karak Highway and things like. Okay, so now you look at them, look at these road networks, and it's like, uh, you, you see them very differently now. You see that the green ones are the expressways, you can see the the green this is a famous ubiquitous North South Highway, but oh, the green one, yep. And then the, the red ones, many, 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 right? Our, just our bloodlines is all over the federal roads. And uh, within the state, each state, man, Johor, just in Diri, they got the, the blue one, uh, the state roads. Napa, uh, again, they got Johor, Chukup. They have a tumpu ka sebelah Patai Barat. Okay? Okay. Okay. And now we go a little bit more uh, detail, a little bit more into the categories of roads. So when we talk about the road categories, uh, uh, broadly it said that you have urban, urban group and the rural group. So 
just uh, have a look at this uh, urban thingy first it says that there are four categories expressway arterial roads collector roads uh, on streets and uh, local streets if you look at the rural bits they have five again expressway highway primary road secondary road minor road so let's look at what they mean uh. The urban ones, remember there are four types, four categories. First one is expressway. So, kalau cakap expressway ni kan, kalau kat Malaysia, kita cakap highway je. Uh, betul tak? Cuba baca, Zat. Di mana highway, blah blah blah. Basically, long trips, high speed. Kat Malaysia, siapa yang jaga? Highway authority. Okay? And uh, the next one is arterial. Arterial ni, perkata arterial ni, kalau bahasa Melayu kita artery. You will remember seeing this word in your biology in form 4 from 5, artery. Uh, penama tu selalu darah utama kan? So, bayangkan kalau cakap arterial road, sudah pasti uh, all those yang networking, yang connecting uh, places to places. So, major roads with partial access, control uh, for through traffic and could serve intermediate trip lengths. Uh, intermediate lah, tak panjang sangat dah sekarang kan? Usually, uh, within, uh, apa nama tu, Within a state, for example, okay, high to medium traveling speed. So ini lazimnya uh, tak akan sampai seratus sepuluh lah. Yes, seratus sepuluh tu ialah highway punya speed. Whether we agree or not, that is a uh, fast enough speed. That's a different story, yeah. Okay, then we have this collector roads. Nama pun collector. So sudah pasti adalah jalan yang lebih kecil dan kumpulkan mereka ke jalan arterial tadi. So they serve as a road on the collector of distributed traffic, the arterial and local road system, partial access control, and these are normally managed by the local authorities. Mm, PWD usually, uh, public JKR, Public Works Department. Uh, okay, and finally the smallest uh, category for the urban roads, uh, the local streets. So these are what basic road network in a neighborhood, jalan-jalan dan taman you, short distance aja. And ni siapa responsible? The respective local authorities, majlis perbandaran contohnya. Okay. Sebab itu, you will have noticed that dalam taman perumahan, the the uh, boundary of your property is sehingga ibu pagar rumah ya. So apa pun yang di luar pagar rumah you atau pintu pagar you tu bukan tempat you. So itu kita suka kan depan rumah ai. Uh, walaupun di luar pagar ai tanah lah, pokok pisang lah, pokok uh, nangka lah, pokok besar besar tu lah bagus nak buatnya. Tapi bila majlis datang dia nak buat inspection uh, tentang dia punya apa nama tu uh, majlis tak datang untuk check uh, check ai ke uh, elektrik itu PNB ataupun uh, ai punya orang mereka je. Tetapi ai dengan elektrik punya orang bekerja sama dengan majlis. They look at the same plan. So when they come, they have every right to alihkan ni pokok nangka yang dah sudah nak berbuah tu untuk ambil apa pun yang kat bawah atau inspect apa-apa kat bawah. So kalau lagi pandai-pandai pergi semen konkretkan depan rumah you tu uh, buat car porch lah dengan lampu lip lock ke apa, dia ada hal untuk turunkan. Dan you will also notice that if you expand your house, ex- extend bukan expand, extend your house lah, belakang orang suka kan, kitchen tak cukup lebar nak lebarkan, nak panjangkan uh, setakat you pagar belakang, okay ya, jangan terlebih ya ke back lane orang ya back lane tu bukan hak kita tau Ingat, it's all our our heart when we buy a house, it's just pagar to pagar. Depan pagar ke belakang pagar. Kalau rumah you semi-D, tepi kiri kanan ada pagar lagi. Sebelah kiri tu adalah atau kanan sebab semi-D. Kalau you bangro pun sama ya, semua di dalam pagar you. Uh, benda di luar pagar bukan you punya. Uh, macam tu. Di luar tu bilang semua majlis punya. So, sebab itu you pernah, mungkin pernah dengar cerita orang extend rumah sampailah ke apa nama tu back lane terambil sikit lah, nak lebih sikit kan. Uh, bila majlis datang, Bukan rumah you, dinding you terkeluar. You punya apa roof tu. Ha? Lebihkan sikit supaya nanti hujan tak tempias. Dia datang, dia boleh suruh you buka ya, benda tu. You tak nak buat dia saman you. Sebab terjulur keluarnya awning you tu pun kira mengambil hak yang bukan you punya. So be very careful. I think these days, uh, majlis, uh, all local authorities are a lot more cautious and contractors are also more cautious now. Bila orang upah dia untuk besarkan rumah expander, akan disuruh arkitek untuk uh, buatkan drawing semua drawing semua masuk ke majlis untuk kelulusan dulu ah uh, and bila dah lulus sekarang very very particular dia majlis akan keluarkan satu macam lesen lesen tu wajib ditampal digantung di luar rumah yang nak di apa renovate tu so dia ada nombor uh, approval and so on bila sama bila so benda tu perlu so kalau tidak kalau majlis ronda you punya rumah tengah renovate tak ada benda tu memang kena saman berhenti kerja dan saman so uh, this is something that you ought to know lah kita dalam civil lagi patut kita tahu dan kita kena respect benda macam ni kan sebab memang bukan hak kita yang luar tu alright Okay, so that is about the the categories uh, in the urban roads. So now let's look at the rural ones. Rural katakan luar bandar kan. So ingat jangan cakap luar bandar means kampung lah. Do you know that air tam pun consider luar bandar? Tak silap air pagu pun consider luar bandar. So luar bandar punya tarifan bukan kata kampung. It's about the population, the economic activities and things like that. Okay, so under the rural uh, road categories, we have first expressway again. So these are talking about, uh, kalau you baca betul-betul kan, tak, 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 tak. 
tak refund macam highway lah sebenarnya dah kata speed tu 110 km per hour but if you look at the the bottom one the second category that is about the highway let's see interstate Okay, link up to the federal capitals yang kita boleh bayangkan uh, contohnya Pago gerak-gerak-gerak sampai ke Aikoro dan Melaka dan Aikoro gerak-gerak-gerak dah masuk ke uh, Nilai dah masuk ke Nilai gerak-gerak-gerak kejap lagi dah masuk Sungai Besi dah masuk KL dah uh, macam tu so it's like state to state alright state to state if if not state to state pun within the state pun dia major cities lah alright complementary to your uh, expressway long to intermediate trip lengths high to medium speed partial access control and the uh, who, those who are in uh, the the authority to this are actually PWD JKR so kalau cakap macam tu you can understand uh, expressway yang dimasukkan ialah highway kita yang kita cakap highway tu yang ada tol lah senang cakap yang ada tol ok yang boleh pecut sampai 110 tu tetapi yang dimasukkan highway kat sini dalam bahasa Melayu lebo raya uh, you ingat tak uh, contoh yang paling mudah yang I boleh bayangkan dekat kita uh, lebo AMJ yang melaka sampai ke uh, Johor tu betul from the, I think somewhere in Melima starting from Melima so you can go straight up to Moa it's a straight road there are many traffic lights you cannot travel at 110 I think the highest speed is 90 uh, 90km di yeah, dibenarkan but uh, it's, it's like a, quite a straight road number one you can quite pecut sebenarnya you berani you tak takut polis hendak you boleh lah 110 or 160 it doesn't matter so you you can travel quite quickly and uh, quite lapang it's a double lane thing uh, yang penting dia straight so highway especially is not straight punya selaju yang boleh cuma dia banyak traffic light kenapa banyak traffic light sebab dia still connected dengan the uh, small towns in between contohnya you akan terberhenti dekat uh, Simpang 4 nak sampai Moa you akan terberhenti dekat uh, uh, Melima obviously and along the way banyak lah tempat so kalau orang yang suka pecut tu akan rasa oh lo asyik kena merah-merah-merah aje ha, macam tu lah but I think the the nice thing about traveling along this lebo right kita kata highway ni memang tak tertol punya tapi you can go up to 90km per hour tu is that there's always uh, quite a good scenery Ah, uh, so kiri kanan you memang kampung uh, sawit ladang and things like that so occasionally you may spot uh, one or two tenggiling which is very rare in Malaysia and endangered species so that would be nice to see okay let's move on and the uh, next uh, subcategory uh, to the uh, rural roads are that uh, the primary roads main roads lah senang cakap so within the state lah dia mungkin uh, capital to district capital uh, apa nama kita panggil uh, ibu kota ke ibu kota lah uh, macam tu dalam satu negeri uh, intermediate punya trip medium travelling speed partial access control so again these are JKR punya kerja then you look at number 4 secondary road district to regional development areas intermediate trip lengths who is in, in, in charge again JKR again okay and finally the minor roads uh, these are local traffic short trip lengths partial or no access control and who are involved uh, who are in charge of these district officers district officers majlis nampak Jadi kalau kita tengok sini, uh, sekurang-kurangnya kita tahu sekarang setelah tengok this nice, uh, we will see that uh, uh, the roads, we already are aware, I'm sure you are aware the roads are the besar sampai kecil, uh, quality, uh, quality-nya, uh, apa, the traffic volume and in your mind, you, you already have an idea what kind of um, category hierarchy ni lah, you tahu which one it goes down and the smallest one are the minor roads ni usually jalan-jalan betul jalan kampung dah lah masuk kampung kampung macam tu lah so these are memang masuk majlis punya jalan termasuk termasuk jalan-jalan yang kat taman-taman perumahan tu those are under majlis ok ok and this table is nice because this table summarize yang tadi empat slide tu yang susah payah banyak ayat tu lah this is good contoh they put up down you have rural and urban and you can look at the, they, they apa, apa, segregate it into uh, three three types of uh, characteristics like trip length the design volume that's how much your traffic is going through and uh, the speed that is being allowed so just very quickly I think oh, speed uh, is interesting let's look at the, the urban one uh, kat bawah ni you tengok speed kalau untuk urban uh, express sampai lah ke local so besar sampai kecil tengok the speed makin kecil jalan tu makin uh, memfokus kan makin uh, pendek travel distance ya you may speed makin kurang ya uh, so it makes sense kan that we just said if you are talking about uh, highway uh, expressway sorry uh, yang ada tol tu lah yang kita panggil highway tu memang lah laju memang sangat laju boleh uh, tapi kalau kalau dah masuk ke uh, jalan yang uh, arterial tu yang connecting between bandar tu bandar tu tak tahu boleh laju sangat lah ok and similarly collector road lagi lah kecil dan dah, kalau dah kecil bu, sebab dia single lane contohnya single lane so the traffic volume may not be high tapi dia single lane kalau ada lori kat depan contohnya tak tahu boleh pecut 
you tak adalah boleh potong there are many places that there will be uh, these double lines and things like example yang bagus kat Johor banyak contohnya kita uh, Batu Pahang nak pergi ke Segamat nak pergi ke Lavis uh, memang that kind of road Mersing for example mm. uh, it's interesting look at this road they are very well maintained very good very safe and all it's just that uh, they could be number one quite curvy number two single lane and banyak tempat yang memang tak boleh potong uh, sometimes they are kind they have enough land they actually cut a bit on the side so that the heavy vehicle go to the side a bit so boleh orang potong lah kalau tidak memang susah nak potong uh, boleh bayangkan kan uh, jalan macam tu ok nice Okay, so let's uh, stop here for a bit. It's 25 minutes. Tak nak panjang sangat. Ni susah pula you nak download the video nanti. Okay guys, hang on. Ah.